And welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. The Messages of Inspiration and Hope is proudly brought to you by the good guys at the Six Minute Webinar. And Donna's over there. She's having a little bit of a communications problem with her signal because they had a weird storm at her house last night. And I told her, don't worry about it. And she's working on that. So hopefully she'll be able to tune in with us real soon. And Donna, when you get ready, you just pop right in there, young lady. But we're so glad today we got a good friend of mine. We've been friends for many years, probably about 15, going on 20 or something like that. Sam Stevens. And Sam is, is he's military guy. Let me take Donna back there. And him and I, we're, we're going to, Donna's, I hope Donna's here because Donna can get it, keep us straight. But before we begin, I just got to pay a little bill here. So if you be so kind to hang with us, we got a lady here by the name of Angel Marie Monacelli. Hi, I'm Angel Marie Monticelli with Angel Marie Shines, and I had the pleasure, the honor, to go through training for the six-minute webinar. Oh my gosh, this webinar and how it's structured and how they teach it. Thank you, Speakers Pathway Coalition. Thank you, Don McGrath and the whole team for the six-minute webinar because you made it so simple, easy, and the way you lined it out with the outline. I can reproduce it and reproduce it. And I'm already getting the engagement. I'm getting people that are coming back that are saying, oh, I love this webinar that's so short, so to the point, and I love your products and what I'm selling, but then what I'm also, the services that I provide, and I don't want any of this because I have the framework. So thank you so much to the whole team because the six minute webinar totally rocks. Thank you. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Donna is still working on her system there, trying to get everything going. And we'll be so glad when she comes back to join us because Donna and I, we, we go back a long ways and we're, we're great friends. The way I, I remember meeting her in Phoenix because I went to several events out there in Phoenix. But the way I really get, got to meet Donna was that I was invited when I was out in Phoenix in an event. I was invited the next day to speak at a chapter that she headed over in Scottsdale, Arizona. So I went over there and spoke at her event. And we just really hit it off from there. And let me see if she's, uh, if she, Donna, can you hear us? Are you there? Is your, is your signal good? She'll be able to add herself back. But anyway, we're going to drive on because sometimes technology happens like that. And, you know, things go, you know, haywire on you. It's not too much you can do except just roll with the punches. When this show originally started, we were on Zoom and Facebook Live. And that was back right when the pandemic started, you know, back in March of last year. And everybody was doing Zoom calls and Facebook Lives and whatever. And I was I was the, MC, uh, the host of the show, I should say. And... I got kicked out three times in one show. Fortunately for me, uh, Janie Sterling was with us that day, and, and she's a professional speaker. And, and Janie just says she knew we had trouble, so she has carried on with the show. She, she took my job and carried on with it, which I really appreciate. And it became kind of comical because, boom, I was out. Boom, I was back. Boom, I was out three times. And the third time I told Janie, I says, you know, next time I'll listen. They told me when I got on this thing, I have, better have a pocket full of quarters to keep it going. <laughs> because sometimes that's all you can do is when technology goes wrong and you can't, you know, get things going right. You just, you know, roll with the punches. But Mr. Sam Stevens, <laughs> he's a great friend of mine. We've known each other for many, many years. And I got to pull up his website here for him. Humble Pie Solutions. Let me welcome him to this show. Hey, Sam, how you doing? Hey, Jim. Long time no see, brother. I mean to tell you, brother. I was telling folks on the on the show here, I said, we go back about 15 or 20 years, don't we? Yeah, probably more. Probably more. I just, I don't remember much before that, but yeah, same home church. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Yeah, we go back a long ways, and I remember yeah. when you 
started Humble Pie Solutions. I was pretty accurate on that. I said about six or seven years ago, you said, yeah, it was in 2015, wasn't it, when you started that? Yep, 2015, 2015. And when he started that business, I tell you right now, folks, he was always on the road. He was always on the go. I mean, you worked like a beaver trying to build a dam in the middle of a flooded river, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know that that hill that our parents climbed both ways? That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the hill I drove every day. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Same hill. Oh, yeah. Well, Sam, B., uh, let me just give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to the audience out there and just, you know, who you are, how you got from where you are to where you are today and all those wonderful things, sir. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, you see my name at the bottom, so I won't go through that. But uh, hmm. yeah, I grew up in a little bitty town on a farm of 100 acres, little bitty town. I had 30 people in my graduating class. And uh, not too long after uh, high school, I ended up joining the military. So, of course, me and Jim, anytime we need something to talk about, we we can have it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, spent nine years in the military, uh, went overseas a couple of times, got to see some things. And then just after the military, I had the great, wonderful blessing and fortune to get put in a company that actually hired people who had really good soft skills. And they said, we'll train you on all the other skills, but this talent with people, we, we can't really train that. We need mm -hmm. to hire that. And I mm -hmm. loved, loved, loved it. And I got to see corporate America up front, which was so mm -hmm. cool. And it was a project based uh, job. So eventually the project ends and your job goes away. Well, I loved it so much that a, a couple of years later, I decided I really wanted to get back in that world. But I, I kind of wanted to solve some of the problems that I saw. And most of it had to do, do with leadership, management, and, and just the overall environment of business. I thought that mm. business could do better in the way that it managed its people. They've got processes and procedures down. I mean, they got handbooks galore. Mm -hmm. uh, but the managing of its people, and Jim, I don't know if you necessarily came in contact with, with this, but just stay with me, if you will. Go ahead. I saw bad leaders in the military. Uh, just mm -hmm. Now, just hear me out. Some guys had or and ladies had the rank, but they didn't have the leadership. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in corporate America and businesses, some people get promoted one too many times. They probably should mm -hmm. have stayed in their department. They probably shouldn't have ever been over people. So yeah. that's not really the business's fault. And it's not even the manager's fault because the manager doesn't get trained on how to be a manager. They just get thrown into the position. Mm -hmm. So. It, it really um, it invited me into that space and uh, with a, some of the background that I have and some of the things I'm just really passionate about, it was just a natural fit to go into that space and see if the training that managers needed, if I could go ahead and just offer that. And, um, and I've been doing sure. it since 2015. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, I love yeah. It. Love it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because all of us have seen people that they get what we call get promoted one stripe above their potential. That's it. And, and uh, it's, you know, it's not, uh, and sometimes no, no one sees it coming, you know, really, right. you know, just uh, they get uh, promoted. Uh, I don't know if you call it to get above their comfort zone or their ability or whatever, but uh, some people are just not managers of people. They just That's don't right. have that specific skill or ability. That's right. And uh, I was very fortunate. I never had too much, you know, problem managing people or anything like that. But uh, I tell you right now, you know, when you started your company and all, and I've, I know you was always on the road and always gone. You were president of the local Rotary Club here. And my goodness gracious, I mean, when did you sleep, guy? That's what I want to know. When did you sleep? <laughs> in between. I'll just keep it at in between. In kind between. Same, huh? same as the military. You just sleep when you in between. Yep. Sleep when you can. That's yep. right. Oh, goodness. Let me see if Donna's uh, got communications with us and we'll bring her back here. Let's see. I cut her up, cut her on there. Anyway, we'll just leave it alone for right now. But, you know, it's really amazing when uh, when when you when your paths cross with other people, it's always for a reason. It's always for a purpose. And um, last year, you know, I think I told you the story how we created a Zoom and Facebook Live webinar series just to do something 
because we knew all these speakers, Don and I, Don McGrath and I, we had created the Speakers Pathway Coalition, which migrated into Scale Pathway, and we're all part of this six-minute webinar. But my point being is that uh, we just wanted to give, you know, a chance for speakers to be able to have a stage to speak on and provide some messages of inspiration and hope because, let's be honest, we were all you know, house lockdown, some people were actually migrated into solitary confinement. Yep. I still know, I know of, let me put it like that. I still know of a couple that are still pretty much scared to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, my philosophy is, is that, you know, if I'm, uh, I guess she's going to check back out and, and get the thing work, working there. But my philosophy is if you're, if you're, if you're afraid you're not living. Mm. You really aren't. And um, there's no need to live in fear. There really isn't. I mean, because, you know, <laughs> if something's going to happen to you, it's going to happen to you, you know. That's the way I look at it. And uh, and Sam, you know, you've spent a couple of tours over, overseas. Is that right? I did. Yeah, three, actually. Mm -hmm. Three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. my, my son went over. Uh, he's finishing up 24 years in the military. He'll retire in August. To, between me and him, we got... We racked up 55 years. And he's like, wow, when I think about that, I'm going like, gee whiz, somebody in that group's got to be old. I'm wondering who it could be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. But it's such an honor to wear the military uniform, isn't it, and to serve. You know, there's there's pride. Uh, there's mm. just so much pride. Um, to know that, that number one, you're, you're really part of an elite group because uh, in, you and I were talking about this not long ago, you know, mm -hmm. even less than about 1% of people even qualify to be in the military. I know people who said yeah. I wanted to join, I couldn't get in. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, it's really, it's really a prestigious thing. And it's to be around people that are not just sharing your, um, your job. They're mm -hmm. sharing the freedom and the, the willingness to stand and fight for what I like to call things of light, right? Mm -hmm. Th that light things, because there's darkness and there's light. And mm -hmm. it's interesting in the military that you get a firsthand view of the difference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. I remember driving in the back of the truck in a, in a deployed zone one time. And of course, you're looking for bad guys. But one thing I noticed is as we were driving to my left and to my right, there's also good guys. They're mm -hmm. just farmers. They're just taking care of their oh, family. Yeah. They're just walking to work. So to recognize the difference um, mm -hmm. is crucial and to realize not everyone is dark and not everyone is light. And that, that was oh, an yeah. interesting realization. It really is because I've when I speak on stage, I talk about the LLAR, and I've mentioned that to a friend of mine uh, this morning, a new friend of mine, I should say. We were visiting the phone. She's a retired colonel. And, uh, hey, Christine, if you're watching, appreciate you tuning in. And But, you know, when you go to these other countries, no matter where you go, whatever, everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be liked. Everybody wants to be appreciated. Everybody wants to be respected. And... Everybody wants to live their life the way they want to. They don't want any type of uh, governmental you know, interference in their life. Some people don't have a choice in that matter, depending on the type of um, you know, governments that's ruling them. But the fact of it is, is that they just want to live their life. They want to be left alone. They want to enjoy their family. And regardless of how rich they are or how poor they are, what they've got, what they don't have is ir irrelevant because it's their life. And they have every right to live that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's always amazed me how the poor people in those countries, uh, poor in this country and poor over there was two different types of poor. Mm -hmm. Those poor people know how to survive. <laughs> yes. The poor people over here, they're kind of like looking, you know, for someone to help them survive. And they really need a hand up in this country mm -hmm. rather than a handout, you know. Mm. Because that's that's what's wrong with us. We're 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 lazy and we're spoiled. Let's be honest about it. And I guess poor Donna, she's <laughs> I know she that aggravates her to no end because I know her so well and bless her heart. You know, I feel for her, but we're just going to let it let it ride. And, you know, it's just amazing how, you know, when technology goes wrong, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yep. Reboot. Oh, yeah. 
And I told her, I just cut your computer system down, you know, clean everything out. And um, she said, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do what I can. She says, this thing is really getting aggravating. So I said, well, don't, don't worry about it. We and, know. Uh, oh yeah. We, we it's, it's, you know, with us, piece of cake, right? That's too easy. <laughs> too easy. We're born for this, Jim. Come on. You, you know that. I know it. I know it. <laughs> I know it. You and I, we could carry on a show for a couple of three days, you know. We we definitely could. And one of yeah. us would come up for air eventually. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You were talking about dark and light. You know, you were you were talking about that that there's there's a difference there. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I appreciate. Uh something interesting about this show, you know, messages of inspiration and hope. Mm -hmm. To me, there's those who live are living their life, they're 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 at peace, you know, they're they're doing their thing. What I like about this is this is a proactive push towards mm -hmm. hope because oh, yeah. there's always a need for encouragement. There's always a need for positive energy. There's always a need for higher vibration. There's always a need to just say again, a dream, a goal, anything. And so this inspiration side, you know, not everybody's built to inspire others. You mm -hmm. and I, we are built to energize. We're built to motivate. And so mm -hmm. this is our ministry, our proactive way of spreading light and and there's that's that's not no small thing oh yeah you're absolutely correct because uh like we tell people all the time either at scale pathway because scale pathway we've got the three uh, legs of it where you create uh, where you get clarity then you create mm -hmm. and then you scale mm -hmm. you know you've got to take your gifts your god-given talents your gifts and your abilities to bless others i mean that's why we're here we really yes. are that's why we were created and uh, we're also you know yep. As people, we're social beings. We need to, you know, associate with people that's got like-minded and like-minded that we are, and uh, also like got the same kind of heart because that's what it takes. Right. It takes heart. That's it. And Bill Heinrich, he is one of our uh, one of our executive training directors, and Bill and uh, Don work very closely on the six minute webinar. Mm. Bill has a book called Clarity ebook. Yes. And Clarity has no story. You just get it at myfreebook.me. As it says right there on the ticker tape, myfreebook.me. And Bill says the very first thing you got to do is recognize no matter what's going on in your life right now, you're at the perfect place for you. Okay. Yes. And get out of your head because your head can only show you what's in the rearview mirror of down the pathway of life. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and get into your heart because when you get into your heart, it just a abundance of the universe is open to you. Yes. And everything in the universe is a vibration. And yes. the universe is expanding, as we all know. But then again, what's to stop it? You know, that's right. Nothing. And it, it's just it just amazes me. You know, it seems like the older they get, the more wiser I get. And of course, I still got a lot of room for improvement on that. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends on who you ask, Jim. You know, my mother uh, loves me, just loves me. So, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's what she said. Mm -hmm. Well, this, you're just a lovable guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have good taste. Jim. Oh, OK. OK. <laughs> I guess. But, you know, in addition to, you know, being in the military and, you know, having Humble Pie Solutions, let me put your website back up there again. Uh, goodness. Uh, you know, you're, you've got four daughters and one son. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So I actually so grand total, I'm, I'm a daddy to, to six kids. So, yeah. <laughs> OK. OK. I didn't know about number six. I knew you had four daughters and a son. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting experience real fast. Real oh, fast, okay. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask this question again. So exactly when do you get time to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> In between. <laughs> yep. I hear you. I hear you, my man. You know, it's it's kind of amazing how uh, the pathway that you took, and when you created the humble pie solutions, mm -hmm. uh, I really like that name, humble pie, because I wondered, you know. How did that all come about? How'd you select oh, oh, that God. name? Okay, I'll 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 give you the real story. I wasn't really actually supposed to tell anybody this because it's so um, lackluster that I, I thought it would just be a waste <laughs> of air. But uh, I'll tell you what happened, Jim. Um, okay, you and I know how to pull a trigger on something, right? We know how to. You know what? It's just time to move. Let's just go for it, right? So I decided today's the day that I need to pick a, a name for my business, and of course, I could you could spend a lot of time trying to pick a name and which one's right. And I sat down at a restaurant and the very first thing that came to mind was how hungry I was. And for whatever reason, 
I wanted dessert first. My, my mother, uh, her favorite poem is roses are red. Bubbles will burst. Life is too short. Eat dessert first. Of course she works at a bluebell factory. So that makes sense. She's, she, so she, she, she makes ice cream. It makes sense that she would. Yeah. Again, she loves me. And we clearly love her. So I sat down, I wanted some food and immediately humble pie. Like just, mm. you know, just somebody needs a big slice of humble pie. And I decided mm -hmm. in that moment, I'm going to go with it mm. because it just, it matches what the way I want to present. And, mm -hmm. and yet it's still got a little twist of fun. Mm. So I decided, you know, I'm just going to go with it. I'm just going to go. I'm not going to think about this anymore. I'm pulling the trigger on this and I'm going with it. And it, it stuck since 2015. <laughs> so it That's was amazing. I was yep. I was hungry. So, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Cause humble has a lot of, uh, it has a good meaning behind it because when you come in with that, uh, it, it just says that you're down to earth and you're approachable. And that's what everybody wants to, the kind of person they want to connect with. You know, the egomaniacs and all that. I tell them, go on eBay and say your, sell your ego and then come back. That's and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think Donna can hear me now. <laughs> She's cracking up at me. Fine. <laughs> oh, okay. How are you, young lady? So glad that you're here. Donna, you know, Sam has been talking about you the whole time you've been I gone. Have. I've been I've been trying to get in the hush. <laughs> well, we can edit this later though, right? It's editable. Donna's actually my cousin. You didn't know that, did you? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I think she she you adopted me or did I adopt you? What however it came about. Because I was one saying or the other. Yeah, as I was saying, of you know, I was out there in the Phoenix and I saw her at events and I knew who she was, but then I was invited to go over the very next day to speak at the event that you had there in, in Scottsdale. And that's where we actually got to know each other. And then mm -hmm. I had Marty Haggard on my radio show. And speaking of my radio show, I'm pretty plum proud of that thing. We've got over six million downloads and people said, Jim, how did you do that? And I said, I don't know. It didn't have anything to do with me. <laughs> it wasn't anything I said. <laughs> <laughs> but we had Marty Haggard on there and I, I called up Don out in Phoenix and I said, guess who I'm going to have on the show? She says, who? I says, Marty Haggard. She's, oh, she's a huge Merle Haggard fan. And I figured, wow, that would be good energy for the show. And Sam, she was there and Marty made her cry on the radio. Oh, he, he sure did. did. Wow. Cause he looked in the camera. He says, again. Yeah, when we were on, so she was co-host on my show. Then after the show, Marty hung around and talked to us for, what, 15, 20 minutes or something like that? Oh, easy, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Donna says, Marty, would you like to be on my radio show? Well, sure, Donna, you know. And she said, well, I'm going to invite Jim to be co-host on my show. And we had him on that show. And that's when I realized that our chemistry really clicked. Mm. And then... Wow. Don, to be honest with you, I think about it, I don't really know how, um, I knew we were going to be working together and doing some things together because our personalities complemented each other. And you had that, you were uh, doing a show there in Phoenix and I was doing one on the radio and doing a webinar, but we did not realize that we were going to be pulled into this E360 TV. It just, it just came to right. us. Mm. It really did. And it turned out to be a tremendous blessing. So the reason I share that with you, folks, is that whenever you're trying to do something, you come from the heart. Don't worry about the process. Just focus right. on doing it from the heart, looking how you bless others, and the rest of the things, it will come to you. And that's right. exactly what happened. Flow. Yeah. But, but how we became cousins, Sam, I got to tell you <laughs> that story. I'm heading out to Phoenix. This is after I've been at the event and I knew her and all that. And I was driving along because I like to drive because I don't like airports at all, you know, because every time I when I, when I used to fly, every time I get there to the airport, there was those guys want to play touchy feely with you. And I'm not into that, you know, <laughs> I mean, do I look like a terrorist? <laughs> and anyway, burns, Jim. that's right. That's right. That's that's a sure giveaway. <laughs> it's a good thing I, I don't have a goatee. <laughs> but I picked up my phone and I called her. And she saw this number. Didn't know it from Adam's house, Kent. She reluctantly answered. She says, hello. I said, hey there, Donna. How you doing? 
she says, fine, who's this? I said, this is your long lost cousin, you know? <laughs> and right there, she knew I was lying because she, you know, I'll let you finish that up, Donna. You got to yep. tell Sam that one. Well, my mother was an only child and my dad had one sister. So I have three <laughs> first cousins. That is it. <laughs> I'm like, and now this isn't working. <laughs> 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 then I told her, I said, Donna, it's Jim Grant. How you doing? And I know she started cracking up and we just, you know, it's just been a, a, a friendship that's just been a fun ship and a, just a family type ship all the way through. And that's, that's absolutely. what I crave for. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just been a wonderful thing. And, uh, and Sam, so now you got a new cousin named Donna Guinwa. Can you say Guinwa? <laughs> <laughs> On which side, Donna? Because I, I need to know uh, which side of your family. It, it I'll pick a on. side. It don't matter. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> I oh, can just jump in there. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, put in the application either side. <laughs> Very good. Short list. Great. And, uh, you know, Sam, uh, having you on the show today, I was telling, and I sent an email to Donna earlier today, and I just knew she was just going to love it because of some of the fun things that you mentioned in that email. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. let's see here. Um, I don't have it pulled up. Do you have it pulled up, Donna? I do. Um, that's that's one. Okay. What was one of the things that he wanted to share with us? He was going to, there was a couple of three things in there. A couple of things. Go ahead, yeah. Donna. So the first one is that activity. You wanted to do the really cool exercise. Um, how to get in touch with feel your own identity and energy, both feeling who they are and feeling recognizing who they are not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as, as do I have to study for this? Is this going to be a hard <laughs> test for me? <laughs> for you, Jim, he, yes, he worries absolutely. a lot about that kind of thing. Yes. yes. For me, it's like pushing a chain uphill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please go ahead, though, brother. Please do. <laughs> yeah, Jim, I don't think you or I set the curve in, in on test day. I don't I don't think we're the ones that were were the standard of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's that's uh, that's really interesting. So both of both of y'all talked about energy. Both of y'all have talked about go with the flow. Some people say, you know, things happen organically. Um, mm -hmm. Bill's book and clarity. He, he's got it because he's got the laws down of sending it out into the universe. It's coming back. So. Mm -hmm the energy that you send out right. matters, right? Yes. Well, <clears throat> little things during our day, we don't give a, a lot of attention to until they get vital. So eating, uh, so bo both of y'all taking a drink on air. I know it's cardinal sin number one, but, but you know what? You did it. Why? Because you're a human being and you got thirsty and the body needs water, right? And the funny part is no, nobody thinks any differently. We're like, yeah, I'm human too. I get thirsty. You're thirsty. Got it. And right. no one bats an eye, right? Very forgiving, right? Mm -hmm. It's just part of our physical biology. We need to eat. We need to sleep and we need air to breathe. We need water to drink. We need, these are just things everybody experiences, right? So we kind of second nature. We don't really think about that and we don't really need any training. It just kind of is something that we grow into and we're born. First thing we're doing is crying because we're hungry, right? So this is just part of being a human being. On the energy side, what doesn't happen is we don't get a class on how to be the best self. Mm. They're self-help books so they can fix us when we're broken. But when was the class that you went through on, hey, this is how you recognize who you are and this is how you optimize who you are. Because the best you can get in most of that is really like kind of a really generic, well, here's some things that you may do and like personality tests and, oh, you might tend to do this or that. And that's kind of right. as good. Why? Because there's so much diversity. There's so many different ways that a person could be. So when we think about energy and, and the way that we act every day and sending that out into the universe, a lot of people are like, that really sounds cool. I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> nice like is it is it like a power rangers vibe is it like a care bear stare <laughs> that i'm sending it i don't i'm not sure how to do this and it's really hard to get the training right so <laughs> so <laughs> i'm not good with analogies have y'all realized that? Yeah, mine, are, mine are terrible right it's the gi joe right no uh the uh 
no knowing, knowing is half the battle. That's it. And, and mm -hmm. analogies, I'm not, I'm just not good with them. So energy, right? So one of the things that I do is I try to match your insides, what you feel mm -hmm. with the things that you already experience during your day, but that you may be dismissing as nothing. So just right. like subconsciously we breathe, we mm -hmm. don't have to think about breath. And yet it is vital. If you've ever fallen in a pool or swim, swim down too far and you can't get back to the top fast enough, you, you're not thinking about your mortgage in that moment. You're not thinking about what you're <laughs> going to get the kids at Christmas. That's not what's coming to mind. It's right. I air. air, right? It's just, it's life. It's so your, <laughs> your highest priority in that moment is the things that are basic biology. Mm -hmm. So what if we had an emotional biology that had needs that were just as vital as air, food, water, but they were emotional needs? So have you ever felt like you were suffocating emotionally? Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. So it's, yeah. So it's identifying, okay, what is that? And it's sometimes really hard to put into words. So Here's one way I like to describe it. Um, and this is an activity because we can begin to resonate. But what I like to do and what I try to do in, in any time that I'm speaking or, or even interacting in a class, even one on one, I begin to try to resonate with the person because it's hard to dig up a feeling and put into words. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, what right. are you feeling? Well, I, I don't know. So one example, if you've ever felt like something is off. And you can fill in the blank if that's ever happened in your life. And the best words you have is, I don't know, I something is off. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a gut feeling. It's an intuition. I can't logically explain it. It's just off. Right. Mm -hmm. So something mm -hmm. inside of you says something's not aligned. And so resonating with that, here's one way to kind of define that. It is a feeling of knowing and knowing that feeling. Okay. So if you you feel like you know something, even if you can't explain it and you know that you know it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know it's off. I don't right. know what it is. I don't know what yeah. it may not. I may never right. figure it out. But mm -hmm. something ain't right. I drove through a town one time, little town. And as I drove through the town, all I felt was do not stop in this town. Hmm. Right. I'm like. I got to get out of this town. <laughs> but it's not, it, it, there's there's yeah. no explanation and there's no reason. Why, right. Nothing on the outside was indicating anything, mm -hmm. but I had to get out of that town. And by goodness, I sped up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what is that? Okay. So here's the activity. So what I want to do is I want to walk through in, in, the, in the work that I do. I call it five types or five languages. Okay. So this is taking personality to a brand new level, a level that, that, we haven't really experienced before. And it's to step into that space of walking a person through how to recognize who they are and recognize who they are not. So what I want to do is I want to go through all five very quickly. And okay. I want to give the needs, the air in your lungs, vital, emotional needs of each one. And even Jim, Donna, y'all's feedback would be really cool as we go through this, because I would love for y'all to feel those things within you and tell me if that's you or if it's not you. All right. OK, I'm going to start. I'm going to start with one that's really easy because I know it's the opposite of Jim. So I'm yeah. going to start with yeah, that. Donna, go ahead and go first on these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. yeah, this is. This is the this is the total opposite of Jim. Jim, you probably won't feel anything um, with this because it's it's normally for smart people, uh, but also oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So just sit this one out, and, and I'm sure Donna uh, can identify. So you've heard the term introvert, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The reason that introverts are introverted is because being introverted meets their needs. So a person doesn't choose to be introverted. They are introverted because mm -hmm. it meets their needs. Okay, so here's some of the needs of an introvert. Donna, you tell me if you identify with any of this, okay? okay. I call th this person the thinker. They, they live in their head, okay? So um, privacy is really important to you or really important to the thinker. I, Donna, I don't know you from Eve, so I'm just going to keep going. 
So to the thing. Okay. Well, privacy away, is important to me in, in my home space. It is. Mm -hmm. Is your in my home, home space? It is. Is your home? Do you consider your home a sanctuary from the world? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ah, and when you retreat to your home, what are you going there to to do? Why is it a, a sanctuary, or why is it a, a retreat? Oh, that's yeah. deep. Um, <laughs> it's. I, I've never thought of it that way, but you know what? <laughs> just, um, just to, to, I guess, get rid of the outside noise of the Ooh. of the world. Mm -hmm. The noise to quiet down and to yeah to, to have some silence. <laughs> yeah, the chaos, the ruckus, all that, and you go home. So yep. So what you're doing is you're breathing easier when you walk into your home. And sometimes situations on the outside may be, mm, feel like you're kind of suffocating a little bit. Yeah, sometimes, especially all the craziness we have going on in the world right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, me and Jim, <laughs> we kind of go the opposite. See, the <laughs> chaos, the energy, the activity, even the noise doesn't really bother us. <laughs> I remember walking in New York City. I walked down Fifth Avenue and I saw all these busy people and they were walking by. And immediately I felt like, finally, there's a place that actually works at my pace. These people are going. And I'm like, wow, I feel right at home. <laughs> Whereas everybody else is like, I'm going to go take a nap. These people are just walking fast. <laughs> so they're going to go lay down. But I felt comfortable. So the question is, why did I feel comfortable in that space and other people feel like they need to go lay down? Why would some people be like, ah, too much, too much, too much? Mm -hmm. All of that is because you are getting your needs met in a different way. You get your needs right. met from settling down. Mm -hmm. We get our needs met by maybe right. even speeding up. Mm -hmm. We will finish this conversation, this broadcast with more energy than we started. <laughs> oh, yeah. And other people go, well, I'm really tired after those broadcasts and they'll go take a nap. Mm -hmm. So these are emotional needs. This is your body simply saying, here is how I get my needs met. Being around people, a lot of activity that just you can only be in that space for a certain amount of time. And then you got to come up for air, which means mm -hmm. I got to go home. I got I got to go right. breathe. And me and Jim go, I haven't been around people today. I'm kind of getting cabin fever. <laughs> I need to go and be with people. We'll turn on the TV. We'll turn on the radio. We'll get on our phone, sometimes all three, just to get around people. Why? Because we breathe better that way. Mm -hmm. Now, so, you know, and I guess it depends on the time, because I think mm -hmm. if I can interject, Sam, I think mm -hmm. that we can be both at the same time. Mm -hmm. You like, can I feel, be. Yes. Right. So like I'll turn Jim, the TV on. Yes. But I it, still like. I still like that I'm controlling um, how I'm breathing and how I'm getting mm. rid of that chaos. It, does that make any sense? Absolutely. And, and I have a feeling that you're also another one of these because you can be more than one. You're, nobody's just, you know, you can be more than one. I have a feeling because you keep saying words that point to another one that when I read in a minute, I think it'll resonate with you. <laughs> <laughs> So I think I think that's probably what it is. Um, this this introvert person too. Another really cool thing about them is they have a low tolerance for incompetence. And it's funny whenever I say that these types of people they will go yes. <laughs> they the credibility is everything, and they cannot stand a person who doesn't know what they're talking about. It's a waste of time. Or if they know more. Just don't even bother. <laughs> so interesting people, these introverts. So what is happening in, in all of that is there are specific needs of the introvert. And that's why they are uh, they are introverted. And the interesting part about an introvert is biologically they're born that way. So there's mm -hmm. no school that I can take Jim to an introvert school to make him need privacy more. It's, it's, it's just not it's just not in his nature any right at all so this is not something that that changes it's actually a talent that you're born with it's it's the true you so jim knows that if i said jim you, you know you need a lot more privacy in your life um you need to retreat home more matter of fact just lock yourself in your room for about a week week and a half 
you know, just really get in touch with nature, you know, just spend a lot of quiet time alone. The more I talk about that, the more Jim's like, no, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Whereas other people are like, I'll spend all month in there if you want me to. It's things <laughs> like that that resonate. So Jim knows there's parts of him that just they got to be around people. They have to. Mm-hmm. They, they, they breathe. That's because right. Jim gets some needs met through that. Mm-hmm. So that's the that's the thinker. There's another type of person, um, and I, I it's a it's a dance party. If they had to listen to the radio, they're always going to listen to the dance party. They're a dance party waiting to happen, and those are the energizers. Mm-hmm. So these are our extroverts. These are the opposite of the thinkers, and the extroverts, the energizers, me and Jim for sure. We actually can take our energy without even having to think about it. And when we walk into a room, start a broadcast, mm-hmm. in any way, interact with people, energy goes out. It's just the way it is. We walk into rooms mm-hmm. and the whole room will lift mm-hmm. because the energy has lifted because mm-hmm. we simply have a lot of energy mm-hmm. and we don't even get drank. We, as easy as breathing, the whole room lifts. I, uh, I was in a room one time giving a talk and right before I got started, I was like, all right, here's what we're going to kind of cover today. Boom, 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 boom. And before I got going, one guy goes, man, I'm excited. I don't even know what I'm excited about. That's how easy the energy transfers (laughs) between, between, and I'm just standing up there talking just like I am now. And some people are getting worn out and some people are getting energized. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting how, how these things, how these things look. So why, why, why do we behave this way? What, what is all this? I thought behavior was random. We, we have free will. We get to choose whatever we want to do may not necessarily be true. You may simply be doing exactly what you would do because of the needs that you have emotionally. So what needs would I have emotionally as an expressive person or as an extrovert? Some of those might be number one, I've got to be around people have to. It's, it's air in my lungs. If I'm not around people, I suffocate. Uh, positivity. I really don't do oh, negative yeah. very well. Mm-hmm. I do positive. So anytime somebody needs the bright side of the story, I'm going to bring the positive. And it's e- again, easiest breathing. Mm-hmm. Got to have it. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Deep open communication. Uh, people who are people, people, that's how we connect. We connect mm-hmm. with genuine... Uh, Messages of inspiration and hope where Jim gets to sit down and have deep emotional connection with more than one person online in front of God and country in order to get that deep connection. Mm -hmm. Jim's getting a need met here. And of course, why would Jim go into such a business? Well, look at him. (laughs) Of course he would. (laughs) Too dumb to quit. (laughs) Yeah, it's just what Jim does naturally. Okay, Mm -hmm. so anybody else that may be listening to this they may be able to resonate with that. Like, yeah, I've got a lot of energy. I'm around people. Some people even say I'm too much. I'm not too much. I'm just me. This is just Mm -hmm. what I give. And this is also the gift. We give our positivity. We give our energy. Mm -hmm. Donna, what you look like you had something to say. Oh no, I was agreeing. I was absolutely agreeing. So a person that's like that, they just, they may be feeling this going, yes, that's me. Yes, that's me. And other people are going, yeah, no. This is really high energy. That's not me. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I want to do Donna. I, I want to do the other one that I think you are. Okay. Um, the the person that comes to mind that I believe um, imitates this type of person that he probably had a lot of this was uh, was Mr. Rogers. And this is the balancer. <clears throat> okay, they're a peacemaker ambassador. This person is balance through and through. Okay. So a balancer, again, a born balancer. I have no balance in me whatsoever. There's nothing moderate about anything. I have no need for moderation. I have no need for balance. This is a person who actually needs balance in their life. I rode in a car with someone one time, and as they drove by, they go, did you see that front door? No, I didn't. They said, did you see how off center it was? It bothered them that the door wasn't in the center of the house and they could tell and they pointed it out. And that's why, because their brain is wired for balance. They're balancers. They're born that way. So isn't it interesting that if they come into a conversation and you're bringing one side of the story, guess what side of the story they're going to bring? Well, you know, have you considered and they'll bring the other side, the side you're missing. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So this is a person who has to have balance even in conversation. They, they, that has structure there. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> they need everything in moderation, everything in moderation, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Well, I could use some of this, but then that's enough of that. And then I'm going to go over here and do some of this. I had some people. <laughs> now I need some privacy. I had some privacy. Mm-hmm. Now I need a little bit of people. Just very, mm-hmm. very balanced person. And this particular person also, also holds common sense very highly. <laughs> common sense, very important because this person has a brain that just sees instantaneously. And to them, it's, well, it's just common sense. But it's not common because some people, they don't have that gift. They don't have that need of balance. So mm-hmm. it's not common. <laughs> We see a lot of uh, lack of common sense today, don't we? <laughs> so we do. So we do. And some of it I don't see because I don't have that nece- that gift of common sense like they do. Uh, but they certainly see it, right? Mm-hmm. But it's just part of the nature. So th- th- these are just some examples of, of the type of person that you may be, but it's your emotional biology that mm. resonates with you and you go, that's why I'm doing this. That's why I do what I do. So in relationships as a manager over people, you have these differences. And if you're able to know what actually drives a person, what is air in this person's lungs? If I know that Jim is a people person and I will automatically know that if I take him out of a people setting and make him crunch numbers all day, the dude's not going to make it. He's just not going to make it. So what do I want to do? Well, I want to let Jim do as much as possible in the realm of human activity, people interaction. Matter of fact, he probably doesn't even need a door on his office. Just let the man roam. And he's Mm -hmm. going to be more productive. He's going to have higher performance at work. He's simply going to be better Jim because that's who he is. Mm -hmm. Whereas other people, they need to go on the gift he has. Say, Say that again, Donna. Sorry, that you're that what you're doing is using the gift within each person for better performance. If you know, if you know what to look for, and most of the time we look for outside qualities. What I do is I point to the inside need. There's a need driving what you witness on the outside. Um, So can I do my other activity very, very sure? Let's do it. I'm enjoying this. How about you? Absolutely. What, what Donna just said is it. Oh, so this is fascinating. I have, <laughs> I, I love this stuff. It, I, I, clearly, didn't you see my energy go up? <laughs> Did, uh-huh. So even, even that you want to wreck it, you can recognize in conversation what people like to talk about, what energizes yeah. them. And then yeah, you my- can also <laughs> watch them wilt <laughs> because they just kind of drain away. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's because whatever is, even, even if it's not a conversation, it may be an event or a happening or even something going on in their mind and it's bringing them down. You can watch mm-hmm. this rise. Mm-hmm. And what is it? Both of y'all have said it. It's energy. energy. Mm-hmm. So if we can harness Absolutely. not what drains a person, but what energizes a person, mm-hmm. you're going to have a healthier and a more functional individual. Oh yeah. So that's the idea. Absolutely. That families work. It's just, it's just biology. Oh, yeah. All right. So, This is, this is, I call this the $2 bill exercise. All right. So I have a really rare bill. Not a lot of people have these. I actually collect a few of them. So I have, I have a $2 bill. I hope it's the right way on the camera. I have a $2 bill. Mm -hmm. Now I have a $2 bill, but what no one knows is whether or not this $2 bill is real. (laughs) So my question is, how do we figure out whether or not this $2 bill is authentic? What, 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 Jim, what would you do to know if this $2 bill is authentic? Because they're rare enough. I mean, maybe you haven't oh, seen yeah. a lot of them. So oh, yeah. how would you be able to tell? I think you hold it up against the light and you'll see certain lines to it, nope. isn't it? There might be something. Let's see. Is there supposed to be something? If you made it right, it would be. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, this is a fake because it's the... So that, that's it, Jim. So all Jim did, he said, well, I think there's a line in dollar bills that a lot, he knew a characteristic of an authentic mm-hmm. dollar bill. Mm-hmm. So if we know the characteristics that make it authentic, then we know what is a good $2 bill, but we also know what a $2 bill isn't. Mm-hmm. And so we can what? Now we can spot a fake because now we have a reference point. 
So what do they do whenever they go and they, they just, it just insults me every time the cashier goes and pulls out that little brown marker and marks it on my $20 bill. Yeah. I'm like, don't blame me. Blame the guy that gave it to me. I pulled it out of the Wells Fargo down there. <laughs> blame them. They <laughs> gave me faulty. So if you know the characteristics, right? So all they're doing is taking a reference point, characteristics that they know to be true, using it to find out if it's authentic. That's mm. what this is. I can know that it is authentic Jim as an extrovert because he exudes being an extrovert and his extroversion matches the needs. Hmm. So now I know, Oh, I know exactly what Jim needs. And now we, I can not only converse with Jim and interact with Jim. I actually can help Jim get his needs met. Hmm. And now you're giving in a way that you otherwise may not have been able to give before. And it's the most powerful way of giving because Jim's going to go up. He's going to energize. He's going to be healthier. So that's, that's one way. So if you know the characteristics, so all I'm doing is the same as this $2 bill. If you know the characteristics, you can speak to those and we actually will have a healthier, not just individual, you'll have healthier companies. You'll even Mm -hmm. have a healthier society. And the Mm -hmm. cool part about being human is that's universal. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) So these are universal biological truths, not because of different cultures. It's because of biology. It's because we're all human beings. And so now we have a a, a common reference point literally for the entire world. That's amazing. That is fascinating. uh, I've really, I've really enjoyed, uh, you know, what you're sharing there because I just sitting back relaxing and listening and, uh, you know, you were definitely, you know, hitting all the, the high notes there. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, it's, I was very relieved too, Donna. My energy went up when I realized he wasn't going to ask me an embarrassing question that I did not know on the TV. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait till I get going, Jim. Wait, wait till I get going. Oh my goodness. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in today. <laughs> Well, I, you know, it's really fascinating because, you know, I still think yes, but if, if you were to ask me out of those two, you know, uh, introvert or a balancer, I'm definitely a balancer. Mm-hmm. Balancer. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Energy is everything. Definitely. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's every, every bit of your decision every single day and every single moment is it's an energy decision. Yeah. It's oh, my yeah. dealings with Donna. I know for a fact that she likes order. She likes truth, you know, everything to be, you know, at face value to be worth yes. its face value and not like that fake $2 bill you had there, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Donna not only hears what no you're saying, Don, Donna also knows what you're not saying. See, she she sees, sees through right all of that. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. Pretty cool gift. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's what made our, our personalities, you know, just be such a natural good fit for the TV show. And uh, mm-hmm. I saw that, I saw that, you know, just completely gel when we were on uh, your show, we had Marty Haggard out there mm-hmm. and I just said, wow, this is, this is it. This is a neat fit. And uh, it oh, just, and, it's, and we always have fun. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. You know, we, and we certainly do. We got off the radio or, or the radio show, the TV show, and my energy is sky high. You know, mm-hmm. I come in stoked yeah. and I leave even more stoked because because of what who Jim is and what yes. we bring to the table as as a unit. Yes. And what blows me away is that when we get ready to go off the air, you know, you know, it's we're we're done. The the how amount of time that people hang on and visit with us. That's and right. these and these are guests that, uh, you know, I've just been referred to. I have, I didn't really know them beforehand. I read up on their, you know, their information they sent, the bio and all that. And we just roll with the energy because, you know, sometimes I have people call me up. Well, well what are we going to talk about? I tell them, I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, But really, you know, it's all about following the energy because the energy on the show it actually turns into a mini mastermind because when you're saying something, it a trigger thought in my mind or Donna's mind. And when Donna's saying something to trigger thoughts in our minds, and that's what contributes to energy. Plus we add a little humor with it to it. And like I tell people, we really, we're basically just a, a show that provides some good old fashioned in, infotainment. That's right. And <laughs> that's, that's what it's about. Yeah. Cause our show is being very 
well uh, received overseas. And, uh, you know, our third week, uh, geez, we'd already been invited to, um, I was uh, on a, a show in England and one in the Philippines and all that, and going to be on one in, in India. So, you know, we just, wow. it's just amazing how, you know, people have really like the show and it's all Donna's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Take the fault for that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just the uh, the fun that we have because one of the things we've lost in this country today has been our sense of humor. Yeah. Um, people don't know how to have fun. They no. really don't because what we see on the television and what we hear, you know, and see, you know, social media, it, it's all spreading the wrong message. It really is. I mean, if I can't enjoy life then for me, life is not worth living. Yeah. Right? It really Why isn't. take it so serious? Oh, I mean, yeah, there's, no. there's so much in our lives on our everyday plate that each and every one of us has to take serious and be responsible and, and go forward with that responsibility. Mm -hmm. But there is so much that we forget to be childlike and have that open wonder and that energy of the smallest things in the in, in life that we see every day that brings peace and harmony and laughter and fun. And oh, that yeah. to me, it, you know, if I can't laugh at least, I don't know, a couple hundred times a day, forget it. It's been a bad day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Absolutely. You know, when I was a boy, uh, I, like I tell people, I was a kid in the 50s and an overly intelligent teenager in the 60s. <laughs> that's a nice way of saying I was a dumb butt kid. <laughs> but uh, I remember, you know, it was very common to hear men walk down the street and they'd be whistling. Mm. And I'll guarantee you, if you walk down the street, you know, in some areas and you're whistling, people are going to think you're weird or there's something yeah. wrong with you. Like, how dare you be happy? You know, well, I'm right. not going to drink your Jim Jones Kool-Aid and I'm not going to be miserable like you. That's a choice. <laughs> right. But, you know, it's just something yes, that, you know, right. if we, yeah, because I thought about that one day. I said, wow, I remember as a kid, there was people always whistling. Guys, they, they, they just whistle. I mean, and I, I, I imagine that's something all of us have heard, you know, when we were younger and all. But you don't hear much. Of, I don't think I've heard a person whistle in a long time. Mm. You know? And it's really. I haven't uh, either. Because mm -hmm. I know my daughter, when she works, she hums a lot. Because her boss told me, says, you know, one thing I like about, you know, Lisa is that when she's working, she, you know, she'll sit there at her desk and she'll just hum and work. And yeah. she's very, you know, very balanced like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't even know she hummed, you know. <laughs> when she's growing up, she used to ring the bell a few times, you know. <laughs> Aggravate me. <laughs> Get my attention, you know. But uh, it, it's great. Uh, it, it's really great to have a, you know. You're, you have a good rapport with your kids. That's important. Yes. But uh, yeah, people just don't know how to have fun. They don't have the laughter. They're in kids nowadays growing up. They see so much meanness and evilness. I mean, you know, you look at the average movie, action movie. I mean, how many cars are going to crash? Mm -hmm. You know, how many people are going to get shot? Yep. Well, what about the life? video games? Oh, what about gosh. the video games? Mm -hmm. I mean, those, th I, those I, things are. They're vile. I mean, yeah. I'm 56 years old and I will not. Now, I'm not a big gamer anyway. But if you sat me down and said, Donna, you need to do this. This is great. It's, you know, all this mayhem and killing and stuff. I'd be like, see ya. Got to go. Mm -hmm. yeah, that doesn't exactly. work with, with, with who I am. It's It mm -hmm. puts me out of balance and it would pull my energy mm -hmm. way down. Right. down. Yep. It sure will. Yep. And with young kids, it also uh, desynthesizes them to, yep. and it warps their mind. It really oh, does. Yeah. It's just, uh, I'm just waiting for those companies to make those games get sued. You know, I mean, we're, every time we turn right. around, people suing who? So, mm -hmm. you know, i tell you what, Sam, if I could figure out how to sue myself and make myself a millionaire, I'd go file a lawsuit <laughs> right after the show. Because <laughs> some of the things they come up with, you go like, where did you come up with that one at? You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> but some of the things that's going on nowadays, you know, you think, man, do these people, you know, goodness, I guess they got their brains at the dumbbell store. <laughs> <laughs> We've got about a minute and a half left at the most. And Sam, I want to give you just a, a few moments there to say some parting words to the audience. And thank you again for being with us. We really appreciate it, brother. Good having you here. Yeah. yeah. Y'all, y'all want th- well, thank you. Yeah. Well, that's just tip of the iceberg. It's it's pretty cool stuff. And anybody can reach out to me. I mean, you know, I'm OK talking to people. I don't mind if you reach out. Um, Jim, should I should I end everybody with this poem? Should I read this this Texas poem? Lock and load it, brother. Love to- <laughs> Pull it on full auto. <laughs> <laughs> Just we've been talking about violence. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a little toned down. It, it doesn't invite chaos in any way. Th- this is a romantic Texas poem, okay? Uh, so I'm just going to I'm gonna read it for what it is. It's uh, a romantic Texas poem. They strolled the lane together. The sky was filled with stars. He walked her to the gate and gently lifted up the bars. She neither smiled nor thanked him, for you see, she knew not how, because he was just a farmer's boy and she a Jersey cow. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to (laughs) even... I'm not going to even respond on that one. <laughs> Robert Frost is I get, Jim. It's just, it's not my gift. Yeah. I didn't write that. Really, but. Yeah. So that's his Robert Frost. So you're frosted <laughs> over Robert on that Frost, one. Huh? Yeah. No, I, I, I talk better than I write for sure. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> now, thank J- Jim. Thank you. And Donna, when you recover, thank you as well. Thank y'all for, so much for just the interaction. This is also a, a lost art, you know, just interacting as human beings. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice to be done again. Maybe, maybe those gas stations that are full service will come back soon. I hope. Oh yeah. Those were the days, weren't they? My man. Mm. <laughs> well, ladies I and gentlemen, thank you. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's kind of nice for, you know, guys go out from the gas station and wait on a lady. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe they'll come back sitting on a gold mine, Jim. There you go. Oh, my goodness. We're about two minutes over, but that's okay. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the show. And most importantly, thank you again for joining us. And be sure and let others know about the show. I'm Jim Grant on behalf of Donna Guinmois and our guest, Sam Stevens. Thank you again. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.